ओम ज्ञान चिरंधस्ञानंजन शलाकाय चक्षुर्मीलित येन तस्म श्री गुरव नम वैराग्य विद्या निज भक्ति शिक्षा श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य शरीर प्रेज चैतन्य महाप्रभु दैट यू हैव कम टू टीच द पीपल डिवोशन टू योर सेल्फ थ्रू वैराग्य रेनाशिएशन एंड विद्या नॉलेज सो वैराग्य रेनाशिएशन एंड विद्या दीज आर द टू foundation stone is on brahmacharya mm-hmm. is a life of renunciation giving up sense gratification uh, uh, for the purpose of cultivating higher knowledge both by <coughs> studying shastra hearing mm-hmm. shastra and by uh, practically applying that knowledge in life knowledge is uh, spiritual knowledge is not simply a matter of learning but it is bestowed upon a disciple a submissive disciple by the mercy of the guru and krishna Therefore, an essential ingredient in Ramachandra life also is submissiveness. Submissiveness to the Guru, and in our modern Islamic setup, that would be also to Guru's representatives. Mm-hmm. Now, sometimes we hear about Krihasta Brahmacharis also, because yes. Krihasta is also one ashram mm-hmm. in which one is also supposed to be cultivating his spiritual life. However, within the Krihasta ashram, there is a license for sense gratification. License means it's restricted. Griha Medi life means a life only of sense gratification. But a Grihastha Brahmachari, he basically doesn't have a life of sense gratification. That is not the aim and object of his household. But some license is there for sense gratification. Means some little something. Is there. However, in the Brahmachari ashram, there's no license. There's only service. Now, Brahmachari means one who moves in Brahman. Brahme Chariti Iti Brahmachari. So that means also who is absorbed in spiritual life. The derivation of the word brahmacharya is very similar to the word brahmana. Brahmana, brahma janati ti ati brahmana. One who knows what is brahma, the absolute truth, he is called a brahmana. And brahma charati ati brahmacharya, one who acts on the platform of the absolute truth, oh. is a brahmacharya. Mm-hmm. Now a brahmacharya can live a life of submissiveness and renunciation. If he is fixed in knowledge, if he is fixed in the knowledge that I am not this body, therefore there is no use trying to enjoy it anyway. By practicing renunciation, transcendental knowledge arises. Actually, not simply by practicing renunciation, but but by practicing renunciation under the guidance of a spiritually enlightened person, spiritual master. Otherwise, even many demons also practice renunciation. Hiranya Kashipu is a great demon. Performing very severe austerity, and even we see materialistic people. They perform so many austerities, working in factories, digging roads. It's all austere. But this kind of austerity does not, in and of itself, lead to knowledge, spiritual knowledge. But if one pr- practices austerities, tapo divyam putra kam ye na sabdam should yet chasmad brahma so kyam tu nam kum. Rishab Dev says one should practice divine austerity in the mode of goodness. by which one's existence can become purified and then one can achieve brahma sokyam the happiness of the absolute truth divine bliss so brahmacharya like means practicing austerities for the sake of developing spiritual knowledge and when one is actually situated on the platform of spiritual knowledge by realization then there is no need to practice austerity or renunciation because automatically these will arise within the heart Asudevi Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita Janyatya Shivaya Gyam Gyanam Chaya Bhaitika One who practices devotional service to him, to such a person, uh, knowledge and renunciation automatically manifest by the grace of Krishna. So a brahmachari, he is able to remain renounced if he is actually getting a taste of Krishna consciousness. Previously in this scorn, there was an idea that Brahmacharis, they should all remain Brahmacharis. It's a very good idea. We should revive this idea. Practically speaking, we we have seen over the years most Brahmacharis don't remain Brahmacharis. At least not Brahmacharis Brahmacharis. They may be Grihastha Brahmacharis. Of course, it's not that it's, it's not possible to remain Brahmacharis, but it's possible only if one is very determined. If he's convinced that material life stinks, problem is we're not convinced. Therefore, we see most Brahmacharis, even if they're seriously practicing. 
mostly it seems to make it merry. It doesn't mean that if one that's night is not a serious devotee, but it may be that he's just seeing what is his actual position and what he needs to do to make advancement. Family life is generally considered a compromise. Not in the sense that I was talking about compromise this morning. No, but no, no. In the lecture this morning I was discussing compromise. That means compromise is deviation. So getting married is not a deviation, but it generally is a compromise with the uh, intense life of Krishna consciousness. Because there is some license for relaxation. But many people or many brahmacharis find that they consider they can't go on throughout their life in the Brahmacharya Ashram. It may not be directly the, uh, the sex impulse over and above everything, although usually that is a major factor. But it may be things that uh, just you find it difficult to have to submit all the time, or you may find it difficult to live in a room with ten other people. Although in family life you usually, you know, usually end up with the same thing anyway. I mean, if you get two kids, they're at least as noisy as one kid's as noisy as five brahmacharis. So it ends up being the same. So it ends up being the same thing anyway. But uh, there may be uh, there may be various reasons. One, the sense that you know you want a little independence, uh, freedom to choose as you like what to do with your life. Although that's usually a big illusion because usually you don't choose what you do with your life. Your wife chooses. Or economic necessity chooses. They think, I'll get a job as a racing driver or a film actor, but you end up sweeping the road. So, you may think, well, you know, Brahmacharya life has so many inconveniences, but there are inconveniences in every ashram. Personally, I consider the Brahmacharya ashram the best for making spiritual advancement. Better than sadness, really. In Brahmacharya life, you can remain very humble. Just a Brahmacharya. Um, if you're a sannyasi, it's, it's difficult to remain humble. You see, I'm, see, I'm sitting above you, right? What made me so great that I'm sitting above you? It's just a sit. And people are um, serving me. Well, Brahmachari people, though, they don't come to serve. Me. And in Brahmachari life, uh, if, you, if you don't get involved in management, which you may be, you don't usually have anything to do with women. I mean, practically, as a, as a Brahmachari, I never had anything to do with women except when I was in management. But after I took sannyas and as accepting disciples, then, you know, women disciples are there also. And you get involved in people's family lives and their social lives. People want you to come to their homes and, you know, eat something, bless their babies, pat their baby on the head. So, practically speaking, the best ashram for making spiritual life advancement of spiritual life is Brahmacharya. It's best for remaining humble, for performing humble service, for remaining simple. Generally people don't come to you with all their complex problems. You live a very simple life. Whatever prasad is there, you take. There's a space on the floor, you can sleep on it. You don't have to worry about paying taxes, getting your children educated. You don't have to worry about your children, about your daughter becoming pregnant at the age of 13, or about your children who you thought your boy was going to be a pure devotee, but he became a heroin addict instead. I don't have to worry about these things. Very nice life. You cut the vegetables, wash the pots, yes. and do all these nice things. So it's very nice if you stay very much uh, Even if you don't, you take that spirit into your Grihastha life, and your Grihastha life will be very nice. Brahmachari basically means he's serving, <coughs> always serving. Always serving the Supreme Lord, Krishna, Guru, and Vaishnavas. So if you take that mood into Grihastha Ashram, it's very nice. Yeah. Instead of becoming a false imitative enjoyer of this material, it's maintaining the uh, taste for renunciation, even though there's some license for sense enjoyment, should understand that the aim is to go into family life, the aim is to go in with the aim of coming out in due course of time. And also, uh, one should have the habit of regularly studying. There's no real meaning to Brahmachari life unless you are regularly studying Shri Prabhupada's books. Yeah, books that's 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 take advantage now. You may not get so much chance in the future. If, you, I, if you're going to take sannyas, that's very nice. I say exactly. Brahmachari life is very nice for one's own development, but for preaching, sannyas, some devotees should become sannyas. So, Brahmachari life is a life of preparation prepared to preach now. Prepare yourself to be an ideal Grihastha or prepare yourself to be a sannyasi. Even if you don't officially take sannyas, if you adopt the mood of a sannyasi, that is quite good. That doesn't mean that, that doesn't mean that you announce to everyone, well I adopted the mood of a sannyasi, so now you should wash my cloth. Sannyas means to uh, give up personal desires 
for the sake of preaching Krishna consciousness. So now you have the chance to take up those things. In the future you may not get them. You may not get the chance to become absorbed in Shastra the same way that you have in Brahmacharya. So take the opportunity to study. Don't look for sense gratification. Look for the chance to study. Okay, there are many more things that could be said. Pretty much I said them all in the Brahmacharya book I made, which I think probably most of, I think anyone who's interested in Brahmacharya life must have read that one. So are there any more questions about this? I yeah. Uh, while uh, practicing the devotional service, the renunciation of knowledge comes. But uh, actually, if we only, until when you mentioned that a nun must read uh, a devotee message to the Prabhupada and book, to the Prabhupada and books. Uh, so can knowledge and renunciation comes only uh, cultivating devotional service without studying from when it said that knowledge comes, that, that means that uh, knowledge is revealed within the heart. Someone who reads Prabhupada's books but without a service mood, the knowledge does not become manifested within them. Now, there are cases of great devotees like Kaur Kishore and Prabhupada, who from the external point of view was illiterate, but from his mouth all the Vaishnav Siddhantas would automatically manifest. He is a, an eternally perfect devotee of the Lord, come from the spiritual world. We are sadhaks or Devotees practicing to come to the perfect stage. Sadhana. Yeah, he's one who is practicing sadhana. So an important part of our sadhana is to study Shastra, to appear and study Shastra. So by doing that and by engaging in the other processes of devotional service, in the mood of devotion, then Krishna will be pleased to reveal realization of that knowledge within our heart. Maybe that if one has a very strong service mood, that even without studying, he can become advanced. But generally, it's recommended for everyone to not study this. It is said that in order to become a brahmachari uh, for all the life, it is good to, to go to India. And how is, is it possible to do that in the Western, in the Western countries? Certainly the uh, atmosphere in India, even today, is more favorable for cultivating detachment and brahmachari life. How to do it if you're in the Western countries? Well, Axiomatically, you can't both be in the Western countries and in India, so how to do it if you're in the Western countries is you have to go to India. That's you right. can't live in India if you're living in Lithuania. Yes. Apparently, uh, Niranjan Maharaj, who's the GBC here also, the Bhakti Chaitanya Maharaj, he's not very enthusiastic about sending devotees from here to India. Actually, many, many of our leaders from the West aren't very enthusiastic to send devotees to India. Are they? I'm not. The thing is, because a lot of devotees, they go to India and they just kind of space out. They mix up. Space out with them. That's it. That word must be in, it's Iskon Lithuania, no? It's in a, it's in Russian. Everyone in Iskon Russia means space out. International. It's international Iskon word. Uh, well, you know, they, they wander around and make themselves into a Babaji or some kind of being. Yeah. So that may be one of the reasons they're afraid of. If you're going to India, you should have some fixed program of preaching, fixed authority. Is that that, that, that says that on sannyas is One of the five things forbidden in Kali Yuga yeah. is taking sannyas. And it is said, oh, straight and forth, clear that without interpreting, because they, they don't interpret. So the, before that there was a discussion uh, about Shrimad Bhagavatam. Mm-hmm. We, we, we see that uh, we don't interpret the Shrimad Bhagavatam, but on the other hand, we uh, actually people take sannyasa, whereas in the Shastras it is written that in Kali Yuga it is forbidden to uh, sannyasa, because there was a discussion, we said yeah. to the Christians that don't With interpret... What? With Christians. No, no, no. In the Shimon Bhagavatam oh. lecture, oh. we devoted. Yeah. Okay, all right, okay, I got the point. All right, now, sometimes in Shastra there may appear to be some contradictory things. For instance, most of the Vedas recommend Karmakanda. Right in the Mahabharata, you'll find sometimes it's said that giving food in charity is the best. Sometimes it's said that giving knowledge in charity is the best form of charity. There is nothing better than this, and in the next chapter it says, or giving food is the best form of charity. There's nothing better than this. Ah. So there may be apparent contradictions in Shastra. Exactly. Acharyas come to resolve these contradictions and give the the correct understanding of the Shastra. Now also in Shastra it's recommended that 
Everyone should take sannyas. Prabhupada often quoted Pancha Sarvam when I'm dead after reaching 50 years. One should take the Vana Prasta life, one should renounce. And uh, in Bhagavad Gita we see repeated discussion of sannyas by Sri Krishna. What is the actual nature of sannyas? And we see that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who we know this verse because it was quoted in, in, in Chaitanya Chaitanya, it is spoken by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu quoted this on the point of uh, not killing of not killing cows, but then in the Vedas, the uh, cow killing sacrifices there. Yeah. 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 So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in discussing with Chan Kazi, resolved this contradiction. Now Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is the uh, the goal of the Vedas, who is the original speaker of all the Vedas, he himself took sannyas in Kali Yuga while acting as an acharya to teach us. He took sannyas. The Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvara Thakur described that actually there's no question of stopping sannyas because it is an intrinsic part of the Varnashram system. And sannyas, as conceived of by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that is very much needed. What is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's sannyas? Itanza asthaya paratmanishtam adhyasitam purvatamayamahati aham tarishami tanam kaparam tamomukandam rin shivayada. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that Following in the footsteps of many great devotees of the past, who fully took shelter of the Supreme Personality of God, I shall also dedicate myself in the service of Mukunda, and in this way cross over the otherwise insurmountable ocean of Nessians. So this kind of sannyasa is required. But then when it's said, sannyasa is one of the five items forbidden in Kali Yoga, then how do you understand that? So, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarsaitako explained that this then refers to the misapplication of sannyas, specifically Mayavad sannyas. Real sannyas is always wanted. Real sannyas means to dedicate yourself in the service of Krishna. That's never to be stopped. But the imitative sannyas of the Mayavadis, which is causing havoc in human society, that should be stopped. Because in Kali Yuga there's so much cheating in the name of religion. And because most people are simply not fit for it. Therefore, sannyas is forbidden in the coming years.